So this is part of a larger plan that we've talked about in the past, but this seems to be a fairly substantial step. Describe why this is important to the overall scheme under which we pay for health care. You bet. And I know you've done some really good reporting on how this uh, this system works, but I, I want to make sure your viewers know about this dirty little secret of uh, how pharmacy payments work. You know, when you show up at a pharmacy to pay for a drug that you need as a patient, there's somebody in the background called a pharmacy benefit manager, a, a middleman that's receiving a kickback from the drug company on the drug that you're buying. If your drug's price is $300, which you may pay that 300 bucks or a percent of that, that kickback going to that middleman might be 60, 80, or $100. Today, that kickback does not help you reduce the amount that you're paying at the pharmacy. So that's why President Trump last night proposed a new framework for the industry where you as the patient will get that negotiated discount right at the moment when you buy the drugs at the pharmacy. How much money are we talking about? Uh, suppose the regulation goes through. You have to have notes and comment. But suppose the regulation goes through and you do achieve your goal here. How much money could it really save? So just in our Part D Medicare drug program, which is the retail drug program for seniors, there are about $29 billion a year of these disguised rebates and kickbacks going to pharmacy benefit managers. If you pull those through at the point of sale to patients when they show up at the pharmacy, that's $29 billion of out-of-pocket immediate savings for patients when they walk in the pharmacy. It's just incredible. You know, $29 billion is nothing to sneeze at, no question about it. At the same time, health care costs a lot, as you and I have talked about in the past, in, in this country. And the question is, can we bend the cost curve? How far will this go in that direction? We talked actually to Mike Levitt, uh, a former uh, secretary himself in Washington, recently about his concerns about Medicare. This is what he said about Medicare. This is a subject that we have to deal with. We are drifting toward a disaster that I think could undo much of the last century. So there's your predecessor at HHS saying we're drifting toward a disaster. I mean, himself a Republican, served in a Republican administration. How bad is it and how much will this fix your new proposal on eliminating these kickbacks? So uh, this plays a vital role in fixing how we price drugs. You know, right now, there is every incentive in the system for list prices to go up. I'm sure you saw when the pharma companies put out their January price increases this year, almost all of them said, we're jacking our prices up so that we can funnel more rebates to middlemen. We even had one pharmacy benefit manager whose major concern from analysts was what's called um, rebate headwinds because pharma didn't increase their prices enough. What kind of a bizarre, distorted, horrible system can that be when every incentive is to higher list prices, higher rebates, and the patient who walks in the pharmacy is paying off of that sticker price and not getting that benefit at the point of sale? And that's what we're fixing. We're pulling that all right forward to the pharmacy. So, Mr. Secretary, what's the argument on the other side, as best you understand? And what is the function of these PBMs? Uh, do they do some affirmative good for society that we might lose out on. Oh, don't get me wrong. The pharmacy benefit managers play a very important role in negotiating discounts and in controlling pharma pharmaceutical spending. So they play a vital role and they will play a vital role under this system. This is only about where does the money go? Does the money go to the pharmacy benefit manager directly so that they can pocket some of that or use that and spread that around? Or does the money go directly to the patients who are actually buying the drugs, reducing their out-of-pocket burden and getting rid of this? This perverse incentive towards higher and higher list prices. We believe actually that with this rule, drug companies will lower their list prices to closer to the negotiated level of discounts. For the first time in history, we would have competition by drug companies based on the price of their drugs. Imagine that. Yeah, it sounds refreshing, actually, as you describe it. But as I understand it, this proposed regulation would apply to federal programs. It doesn't apply to the private insurers, which a lot of people are covered under. Uh, how do the private in how do the people who are covered by private insurance get the benefits of this? Yeah, so what this is, it's under the anti-kickback statute, and what it is is we've created a safe, we're creating a safe harbor to allow discounts to be paid at the point of sale at the pharmacy for the patient, but not to be given to the middlemen. Um, this is related to federal payments, so Part D 
and manage Medicaid organizations. Now, historically, our inspector general has taken the view that commercial arrangements, the private plans, cannot be used to do indirectly what one cannot do directly in Medicare. And so those are those arrangements are scrutinized quite carefully. And as a result, you tend to see commercial arrangements follow the practices in Medicare. In addition, in approximately 30 states, what we interpret for federal anti-kickback laws is actually extended to commercial plans. So we suspect that the change that we're asking for here will actually come across the entire industry, sweep across so that you don't have drug companies and pharmacy benefit managers managing two sets of books and two sets of practices. Now, we have heard one voice outside of the pharmaceutical industry who's raised some questions, at least, and that is Speaker Pelosi, who said the following, the Trump administration's rebate proposal puts the majority of Medicare beneficiaries at risk of higher premiums and total out-of-pocket costs. President Trump must work with Congress to deliver the real tough legislation needed to actually drive down the price of prescription drugs. Is she right that this might really result in higher premiums? Well, we look forward to working with Congress on a bipartisan basis to deal with drug pricing, including with this proposal. But let me be clear, you cannot defend the status quo. Defense of the status quo keeps discounts from seniors. It supports it and supports entrenched interests. It supports drug companies who are setting prices so high, jacking their rates up. It supports non-transparent kickbacks going to pharmacy benefit managers who get tens of billions of dollars in rebates without patients ever knowing where the money goes. Our proposal would usher in a completely new era where drug prices come down, discounts are delivered to your pocketbook, and every interest in our system finally puts American patients first and drives prices down. And we'll work with anyone to try to make that happen. Mr. Secretary, when you came to office, my firm impression was you had a plan. And, and you've been implementing this plan, and there have been announcements at various times. Uh, I'd love it if you tell us what the next step is. I suspect you won't do that. But tell me this. If this is a nine-inning baseball game, what inning are we in your plan in dealing with prescription drug problems? <laughs> well, David, you know, we've talked about this actually on your show. Everyone always asks me, what's coming? What are we doing? You know, we've been the incredibly transparent about what we want to do on drug pricing. The president and I put out a drug pricing blueprint that puts American patients first back in May. And we have been progressively marching through that and ticking off item after item. Now, we still have several items in there that require Congress to act. You know, we need to put inflation penalties in part of our Medicare program so that drug companies don't increase the price of those drugs. We've got to restore real inflation penalties to our Medicaid drug program. We, so we need a lot of congressional action still that I simply can't do as a regulatory matter. So um, we've got to keep progressing through that. And then we're going to be progressing to finalize rules that we have put out as proposals so far this year. Oh, and before I leave you, I want to ask one final question on a somewhat different subject, but something important to the president and to all of us, I think, and that is the problem of opioid addiction in this country. What can your department do to help on that so, for, for, forefront? Because clearly the president wants to uh, end it. Well, David, we, we at HHS here are, play a vital role in the opioid crisis, and we've really been playing, um, uh, uh, making big advances on preventing people from getting into the cycle of opioid addiction in the first place. So we've seen a dramatic and material reduction in people getting on legal opioid prescriptions in the first instance and the size of those prescriptions. So getting those right-sized to the pain that's to be managed so that we help keep people from becoming addicted. And then we're really focused on treatment and recovery for those those individuals who get trapped in the cycle of addiction. Every single metric that we have, whether it is fatalities, opioid overdose fatalities, or it's initiation of opioid, legal opioid use, or prescribing and availability of overdose reducing drugs, or availability and prevalence of medication assisted therapy to pull people out of addiction. Every measure is, tr is going in the right direction. We've got a long way to go, but every metric is going the right way.